Vietnamese Buddhist uh, saint, philosopher, scholar, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh says, uh, until there is uh, peace between religions, there'll be no peace in the world. These supremacist ideas and these fault lines between these two big worldviews is actually the reason of all the pain in the world. Namaskar and thank you to Sangam Talks for um, letting me present my ideas on the two conceptions of the creator and created and this presentation is focused on Hindus. My pen name is Hindavi Swarajya and I'll tell you why this presentation is focused on Hindus. We constantly keep talking about all religions being the same. Gandhi popularized Ishwar Allah Tero Naam. But are they really equals? What does Allah have to say about being equated with Ishwar? What do Muslims have to say about that? What do Christians have to say about equating the uh, Hindu idea of Ishwar with the Christian conception of God? Are they really the same? What do they say? Hindus may keep saying whatever they want to, but what do the other side say? Do we even have an understanding of the nature of Allah or the Christian God? We, popularized by Bollywood, you know, we, we fancy using terms like inshallah to sort of so show solidarity with Indian Muslims. And one has seen this trend very often when talking about Kashmir or sitting in TV panels with Kashmiri Muslims and so on and so forth. Then once again, in, inspired by Bollywood, there is this uh, thing about Uparwala. You know, somebody sitting above and looking down upon us. Is this really a Hindu or an Indic idea of any Indic religion? Let's actually investigate that. This is the purpose of the presentation. So we're going to talk about the concept of God in Abrahamic religions and the conception of the creator, creation, life, nature of reality, nature of man, the ideas of God in Indian traditions or religions, uh, for the lack of a better word, or Indian philosophies or darshanas. Let's talk about the first concept. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam together are referred to as Abrahamic religions. They are religions of the prophet, uh, finding their common prophet in Abraham or Ibrahim. And that's why the name Abrahamic religions, a common reference to them. In this concept, there is a creator. It is without form, so they, so it is claimed. Uh, however, when you go into descriptions of this uh, concept of God or Allah, it does seem to suggest that it has a form. It sits on somewhere in the seventh heaven. So there are some seven heavens and it sits on seventh heavens. There is a picture which is not uncommon in uh, European uh, medieval circles, uh, you know, painting this white, gray-haired man uh, looking down and blessing the, the, his creation below. This is where we've picked up the idea of Uparwala. And uh, we'll explore whether that idea exists in, in Indic religions or no, but it clearly exists in, in Christian theology and uh, clearly so in Islamic theology as well. They're sitting on the seventh heaven and looking down upon the earth very interestingly, this creator is separate from the creation. There is, he created out of nothing and all creation happened. He sort of thought about it and then created. Of course, there he has a Satan who's a counterpart and, and there is this more complex theology and we're not going to go into all of that. This presentation is not meant to go into details of theology, but give broad strokes of the differences between an Indic worldview versus an Abrahamic worldview. Interestingly, this God is also always a him. It is never a her. You will never find references of this Christian God or the Islamic Allah saying her. Very rarely when you corner somebody in a conversation, one could say it, but mostly it is a him. Uh, this God sends messengers who are sort of randomly chosen and sends them to earth and basically tells them that, you know, you remind the general population at that point in time on earth 
uh, about this God, ask them to worship me, follow a lot of these elaborate do's and don'ts given as dictates via these uh, via these messages that are um, sort of dawned upon that or these messengers here uh, in what states we do not clearly know they sort of just happen to them um, and you know these dictates or these verses these revelations are on everything and how to live life how to pray who to pray where to which direction how to live what to eat what not to eat how to get married what is good behavior what is bad and so on and so forth it's like a a full instruction manual of what to do here on earth so that you can get a better afterlife and that is the key to all abrahamic religions that this life is perhaps you know not good enough the real life is actually the afterlife um, you know which which happens in in something called uh, heaven and there is of course a counterpart called hell where you know people burn endlessly and so on and so forth if people do not listen especially after having received this message from some messenger or the uh, followers of the messengers then they will be punished for eternity in this in this hell in both christian either the christian or the islamic hell until a judgment day happens when everything is recycled and you know some, some theology like that and of course life is a test for human beings whether after listening to the message are you falling into the ideas of your own mind where you have questions and you may may or may not agree with those ideas and so life is really a test that is the uh, you know fundamental idea of these religions that you know and, and and if you fail the test you end up in hell if you pass the test you will get all the blessings of heaven sometimes which are very elaborate at least in the islamic idea of extremely orientation to in, in the sexual orientation to what you may find in in the islamic uh, heaven um as i said there is of course a judgment day when all bodies will rise from the graves and head towards uh, god allah and the world is then recreated there is a lot of recycling of these souls um, that happens bodies in, incidentally also rise from the dead uh, you know from their graves and you know that sort of theology and the purpose of this entire existence of god having created all of this is basically to worship him out of subservience and of course out of fear and that is where actually the term god fearing comes up and unfortunately this term once again has entered the indic vocabulary where we say bhagwan se dar or things like that right be god fearing this is absolutely an abhorring idea and abhorring idea to to a true indic you know you there is nothing called god fearing in in an indic world view but we'll come to that later so there is a centrality of uh, god in abrahamic religions the purpose of human action the purpose of life is to appease god so that he judges us well and we have a pleasant life in the life hereafter and true life is really over there all of this current earthly life is all ephemeral and uh, possibly even purposeless this god or allah discriminates within his own creation including of course mankind but also animals Do not listen to the messengers are called kafirs in islam and infidels in christianity unbelievers you know sometimes politely but basically infi- infidels which is a an extremely uh, pejorative or a term to look down upon uh, this entire section of people so the world is actually vertically split into two believers and in, uh, and and non believers and non believers like i said are called infidels or kafirs and very you know very interestingly and ironically both the christian god and the islamic allah do not agree with each other they both call each other kafirs or infidels um islam actually has two categories of kafirs there is ahle kitab and then there is mushrik so ahle kitab are people who are people of the book but are still infidels or still kafirs because they do not follow uh, islam which is actually the final true religion and while christianity actually uh, mocks islam and in fact actually uh, calls muhammad the messenger of islam satanic the idol worshipers as so called idol worshipers in both christianity and islam are the worst of creatures they are called idolaters pejoratively in christianity and as i had mentioned earlier subcategory of kafirs are called mushriks in islam 
and they are these are the worst form of people now imagine right guru nanak swami vivekananda gandhi all of these great people we look up to are all burning in hell for sure they cannot uh, enter heaven because they never converted they never accepted islam so you know they, it's not possible for them to be in heaven according to both christian uh, uh, god and islamic allah um, and by the way this vertical split in the world is actually what causes both christians and muslims to try and convert everybody else they want to set right the wrong that these other people are doing in the world until both of them manage to convert every other person to either christianity or islam judgment day will not arrive which actually is a very important part of their belief system and if that doesn't happen you know it's the the purpose of uh, every muslims or every christians life is incomplete so the idea is to convert as soon as possible so that judgment day happens and then you know souls are refurbished and and they don't have to live in hell or perpetually in heaven perhaps also um, that sort of you know that is the world view and this is where uh, also violence of convert or die um, you know in india we faced this for almost a thousand years um, starting with the capture of sindh in 712 ad convert or die uh, has been part of uh, the islamic conquest love jihad that we people keep hearing of all the missionary conversions in in southern india and punjab all soul harvesting is all driven out of this and especially these christians you know the poor guys are actually doing it out of all great goodwill they act, they can't see sardars poor sardars ending up in um, in hell or hindus um, in in kannadiga hindus you know uh, ending up in um, hell so those poor guys are all out to convert all of us from you know punjab down to tamil nadu everywhere let's look at uh, now i'm i'm making these assertions i'm making these claims but is there scriptural evidence for this or am i just making this up and i'm full of hate and all of this right so let's actually look at some verses from the quran and i'm going to read this out so the first one is chapter 98 verse 6 it says surely those who disbelieved among the people of the book and the polytheists so those who disbelieved among the people of the book which means uh people of the book like the jews and the christians were people of the book but those who disbelieved uh disbelieved what this believed islam this believed muhammad as the prophet and of course the polytheists like the hindus the uh, early egyptians or earlier romans the you know all of the pagans basically the pagan world will be in the fire of jahannam which is hell in which they will be living forever those are the worst of all human beings so here is allah the creator supposedly of this entire world including all these other people uh, you know three fourths of the world population is actually condemning to jahannam or perpetual hell because they haven't uh, listened to and agreed to the message of allah um, and and this is not like a one off statement so you know it repeats in chapter 8 Uh, verse 55 surely the worst of all moving creatures in the sight of allah are those who reject faith and do not believe reject faith means reject islam and do not believe in muhammad and allah this is important and interesting also this is uh, chapter 9 verse 28 believers those who ascribe partners to god uh, which is allah are truly unclean so this is very important to understand what is being said here is that if you equate allah with any other idea of god for example we say ishwar allah tero naam anybody who does that is an unclean do not let them come near the sacred mosque mosque after this year and so and so forth we will not go into that but you know we are the ones hindus are the ones or sikhs or you know uh, people coming from eastern religions are the ones who are actually going out and 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 talking about ishwar allah tero naam all religions are the same you don't hear the same thing from the other side if they say it it comes with a caveat and that caveat is that um you know um ishwar is simply a name for allah it is not a reference to any other idea of 
uh, God than what has been prescribed by um, the Quran or the Islamic theology. This must be clear to all of us and those must be absolutely clear in our mind. Okay, this is the Quran saying it. I am not saying it. I am not hateful. This is the Quran saying all this. And you're please free to refer to uh, go and refer, you know, refer to the uh, to this website. You're free to buy uh, Quran, uh, both in English, Hindi, Tamil, whatever. Refer to these verses and actually uh, and see if I'm telling the truth here. Or am I making all this up? Let's look at Christianity and this whole idea of infide. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? So the darkness is the infidels, is the idolaters. And so is lawlessness. And righteousness and light is to do with Christianity. And this is uh, biblical scriptures. Next one, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, see, uh, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. So this is, uh, you know, like a common fundamental principle of all Abrahamic religions, that anybody who does not believe in our faith is an infidel and will burn in hell forever. So there's a lot of this fear-mongering constantly. And please do not take this fear-mongering as a joke. Uh, if you, or I would encourage you to, on Sangam Talks only, actually go and listen to Maria Wirth. Uh, Maria Wirth is a German woman who came and lived, started living in India about 35, 40 years ago. And listen to her talk at Sangam Talks and how scared she was as a little child uh, you know, fearing when when fear is sort of instilled in her mind, um, uh, you know, that if she asks too many questions or deviates, does not go to church, then she's going to end up in hell. I mean, imagine what can go through kids when you when you bring them up like that. And this is exactly how Christian, uh, Orthodox Christian and Muslim kids all over the world are brought up not only in fear, but also in this supremacist idea that we are, both of us, respectively, are, you know, we are the only true faith. Everybody else is wrong. Imagine what kind of people get created uh, when you bring them up with that sort of ideology. I'm not making all this up, right? Uh, here is Zakir Naik in this video. You can look this up. The title is, Will Mahatma Gandhi Get Heaven? And this gentleman comes and asks, confused, that you keep saying that, um, only Muslims will enter heaven. What about Mahatma Gandhi? What about Mother Teresa? Um, uh, will they enter Jannah, which is Jannat, which is he uh, heaven? And, uh, you know, uh, Zakir Naik um, is an Islamic scholar. Please uh, do not rubbish him when he confirms that Gandhi is burning in hell. So is Mother Teresa. He, say, he say, clearly says, unambiguously says that uh, they did not qualify the one, the most important requirement of entering heaven, which is to uh, recite the kalima, uh, which means to reject every other faith and accept only Muhammad and uh, Islam as the, you know, and Allah as the true God and, you know, accept Islamic theology. There's a link to this video. You can actually open this up or Google for it. We can show you a specific place where uh, he says exactly this. Believe in one God, should not do idol worship, should not believe human being as God, should not believe Jesus Christ as God, peace be upon him, should not do idol worship, belief. Second is righteous deed, do good deeds. Third is exhorting people to truth. Fourth is exhorting people with patience and perseverance. You talk what will happen to Mother Teresa. We'll move on. Let's look at uh, Christianity. Do you know that Gandhi was posthumously baptized by one sect in Christianity? This was in 1996, uh, um, supposedly on 27th March 1996. There is actually a screenshot of a website where, you know, his baptism, uh, there you go, is completed. 27 March 1996, the records have been updated. This is like a database of all people who have been baptized. So Gandhi had to be baptized posthumously. Um, and um, it's uh, the reason this was done 
was because uh, you know the west generally or or the christian west is unable to live with live at peace with the idea that somebody they eulogize all the time as this great man ahimsa vadi and all of this uh you know as actually burning in hell because he did not convert to christianity so they actually had to baptize him bring him to christianity posthumously so that they can say that now he's entered heaven you know this is what would you call this would you call this bigotry would you call this supremacist ideas what what kind of mentality is this really you know but you know once again i'm i'm not here to spread hate and all of this business i'm here to i'm here to speak to hindus to tell you that you know how things are please understand that right do your own research and understand all these things and all this business of all religions are the same this has to drop because you know that's not how uh, both the christians or the muslims look at us okay and you have to uh, once you understand this then you can perhaps the foundation for understanding a, a lot of what is happening in our societies in india and generally around the world that understanding will start to become better for you okay you know many events will start to become clear at this point we reduce these um you know fault lines to politics and things like that it is not politics may be one part of it but most of these fault lines uh, around the world which cause pain and suffering this virtue signaling constantly to hindus all of these come from these this christian uh, priest called father george punaya in uh, kanyakumari if i'm not wrong actually went on in tamil to say that we wear slippers to make sure we don't get our feet dirty and get any disease from bharat mata why is he saying that you know is basically mocking all the sacred symbols that hindus have when i say hindus i do not only narrowly mean what is classified as hindus i also mean sikhs tribals uh, jains buddhists everybody right uh, call them indics but so they may accept buddhism or align with buddhism uh, to sort of jointly attack hinduism if you like uh but but basically whatever is sacred to uh, any of the indic religions is mocked at because it's it's sort of idolatry for them so please go watch uh, this video has subtitles uh, available in hindi and i believe english as well please go do watch um, and understand this uh, sort of the, the story i'm trying to tell you here Uh, let's now talk about completely the other side the indic view of human life of creator created so what is indic it includes like i just said earlier hinduism jainism buddhism sikhism various indian tribal spiritual traditions uh, uh, or even you know sometimes uh, further east in china japan very very similar traditions uh, that that we follow perhaps all influenced by india that's it, it seems to be they emerge from darshanas um which are traditions of philosophy darshan is not equal to philosophy but a uh, pr- pretty close term so let's take it like that and these are reflections on the nature of man nature of life purpose of life and so on and so forth let's actually explore this in a little more detail so i've called the title of this slide uh, pursuit of knowledge and well-being of all life and i'll, I'll share why the indic world view or the hindu world view is centered around human well being there is no god centrality here why am i here uh, why are we all here what is the nature of reality what makes us happy why is there suffering what can i do to remove suffering all of these are questions that the early indians dealt with uh, and you know to, and that's probably what gave rise to all the darshans the nature of reality the ideas of uh, uh, god if you like or the creator created uh, you know all of this so and here is the difficulty that we have you know what when i make a presentation like this which sort of gives two concepts of of life and god what tends to happen is you say okay this is one view of god okay let's look at another view of god say so actually there is this there is nothing called a word called god also in uh in hinduism there's no equal term for it right 
and that's a difficulty so please there is a nuance here just stay with it um, as much uh, as you can uh, we will talk about this in detail in in future presentations like this for now i'll try and keep it a little simple even if you end up saying okay here is this idea of god and what is the other idea of god um it's fine uh, for the moment but I, you know just stay with me and I'll, i'll try and explain the nuances a little bit better so there is god centrality in abrahamic religions there is no god centrality there are no rights and wrongs no do's and don'ts no specific messengers who've been chosen to come to earth to elevate people uh into thinking into into worshiping this god there is no judgment you know none of that exists okay all the the indic philosophies and the indian darshanas are about the nature and purpose of man purpose of life how can i be happy and from this emanate the ideas of creation how did creation happen these reflections okay and these reflections uh, lead to conclusion of uh, beings sentient beings called devatas which sort of emanated uh, in the process of of creation if you like and the fundamental basis uh, the fundamental basis of all creation is simply consciousness some people call it brahm um, brahm or brahman uh, this is not to be confused with brahmin or brahman which is a varna or caste this brahman or consciousness is firstly clear like i said earlier is not 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 an equivalent term to an abrahamic god it's a non discerning non judgmental non doing this this brahman is not uh, somebody who acts who judges uh, d- discriminates says here is right here is wrong worship me nothing like that is it is simply consciousness it is simply a conscious force it's a little hard to understand but you know for those among you who like to watch star wars may the force be with you you know you could sort of try and do some uh, equations of this conscious force like the, like like that right uh, or in the movie avatar um, you you could draw these parallels hmm? um this brahman has no qualities it has no form it is nirakar it is formless nirgun which means without qualities good or bad hmm? male female none of these from the brahman springs out of springs out all of creation all this universe all of life and there is a uh, you know there's much more detail about how creation happened even i'm learning in the process but you know whatever i've grasped i want to share it with you so that um, you know you're able to uh, you know start this journey of of uh, finding out differences between these two different uh, conceptions these two different world views Uh, and because everything emanates from brahman and hence there is no separation between the creator and creation if you want to call brahman the creator which it is not because it is not associated with action okay this part is very hard to understand and you know we'll take a lot of time lot of learning and and all like i said i don't know uh, all of this either i'm also learning from scholars from friends mentors um i won't name them but some of them have influenced this presentation very deeply there are various levels of beings in this creation there are human and non human for example there are devatas not only devatas there are rishis gandharvas yakshas rishis for example in the mahabharat uh there are rishis of non human um origin they don't have human parents they're just there they appear they interact with human beings yeah human beings are just one among these layers of beings which 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 sprung up during the process of creation these higher beings if you like uh, are not visible to human beings perhaps at some point in time ancient past they people say they walked the earth whether they did or not we don't know but you know that's that's the puranic stories if you like that's how the puranas talk about them uh human beings but what's more important than whether they walked on earth or no is that human beings can access and call upon them call upon what call upon the qualities they possess possess so these higher beings devatas and everybody that hindus worship 
you know it's uh, you know hindus are mocked at for saying you have 33 crore devtas uh, or some say 33 million in all of this business that's 33 koti which means 33 um types if you like classifications they're not 33 crore or 33 million uh, but that's a separate story um so but we can call upon them these are devatas or beings with specific qualities for example if you want learning if that is what your calling is in life then you go worship saraswati you don't go to lakshmi to ask for knowledge you don't invoke lakshmi to ask for knowledge you invoke lakshmi for wealth and uh, other things but for knowledge you go to saraswati so in this sense these these divine beings whether they are outside or whether they are inside you this is also a you know constant i'm also learning like i said in the process are they uh, you know are they only inside or are they actually beings outside some of this is ambiguity and please just live with this ambiguity for a little bit it's okay and you know work from there work upwards from there let's start our journey together uh, from that point but just coming back to this point that human beings can call upon these devatas or any other forms of higher beings using mantras yantras murti puja uh, murti puja is actually an essential form of invoking the divine and establishing these divine uh um, uh qualities the divine energy of these specific devatas in the vigraha in the in the murti uh, it's not just an idol it's not a it's not equivalent to stone it may be but not after the prana pratishta process has happened it's a living being there are swamigals in the country at this point in time who could actually go to a murti and um uh, you know look at the there are swamigals in the country um who can actually um go to a murti and tell you which nadi is uh is flowing at this point which swar is moving right the left side left nostril or the right nostril that's a swara in in yoga right? they can actually tell you which swara is moving it's a living being it's just in it it it's not physically moving it does not have physical movement but energetically that the deity of the temple is a living being that is why we engage in murti puja it is not simply idolatry that we make any murti any stone and say okay we'll there we are going to start uh, worshiping it this is just pejorative this is trying to mock us to make us look bad all of these kind of things is what christianity and islam does um uh, uh, you know to mock at the religion basically to try and convert people to to the christian idea of god or to allah um the human endeavor in the indic idea is to find pleasantness in life both material and spiritual and you know the definition of dharma for instance uh, includes ideas like abhyudaya which means socio economic progress and welfare and nishreyas which means spiritual progress and welfare both of these go hand in hand and beautiful right that's the definition of dharma both the inner and the outer you have to excel in both find pleasantness in both find progress in both these areas and this is why i was trying to explain the nuance to you that there is a human centrality here human well being not only human but actually all beings all of life a centrality of all of life well being of all of life so Uh, and like i said devatas we worship for our own well being and their well being as well we actually offer gratitude for to them to not only to devatas but all beings uh, that we can access to we can see physically and those that we cannot see we actually offer our gratitude our thanks to them uh, during the pujas and the archanas for uh, giving us this life to our to our ancestors to our pitra we 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 thank them uh, for giving us this life that's the purpose of shrad for example and so what must be clear to us and unambiguously and we must be unabashed about it there's no we don't have to uh, you know fall into the trap of oh there is one god on the other side how can you have many gods we are polytheists we actually worship many gods but please understand these are 
these are deities there are devatas this and and actually the way allah and the christian god behave they are no better than any other deity or a devata that we have who are also limited have qualities good bad okay there is no difference they just say that this is only one and that one and as i had explained you know creation is out of it uh, discriminates against uh, his own creation all of that does not you know fit a uh, fit the idea of this one grand creator you know i mean it, it sort of just just does not work and even while being polytheists hindus understand the underlying principle of all of this which is the brahman which is this conscious force which is the oneness of all life of all creation ramana maharishi was once asked how are we supposed to treat others then he responded there are no others yeah so basically uh, and and if you listen to sadguru for example and his uh, uh, his enlightenment day he was sitting on chamundi hill in mysore and you know if you listen to that story he will actually he talks about that he he just lost the sense of his body he did not know where his body you know starts or ends there is no limitation everything around the stone the rocks the hill the air everything was him if you've seen the movie lucy beautiful movie really really recommend watching this movie it's on accessing power of the brain using uh, dmt which is a you know an artificially produced chemical uh, dmt of course exists within our own bodies but this one this movie is all about artificially pre- producing it and uh, lucy ends up consuming it and and so on and so forth so once she accesses 100% of her brain she disappears and this police officer who's trying to help her um, you know basically get all this information out to some scientists um, uh, you know before she is killed by some goons and all of that story he says where is she and uh, nobody has an answer you know where did she disappear and suddenly she, he this police officer gets a text message on his phone i'm everywhere beautiful <laughs> you know there's there's huge profoundness you know, in that movie and in this in this message if you see the movie avatar star wars the matrix they all start to point to you know very very indic ideas of uh, of oneness all earthly forms of life algae tree the much hated pig to islam islam calls it you know a dirty creature even for dogs for example um, in christian theology there is nothing like that over there they both like to eat the cow and poke a finger in in hindus nose uh, you know mocking them for calling cow a mother um, but so be it um, all of these creations including humans um, inanimate objects rocks mountains rivers oceans everything is part of the same consciousness all creation is thus divine there is no prescription for human beings by brahman no do's and don'ts no in- instruction manuals of how to live life and what will be the life after there is no preference or dislike for one form of life or another no discrimination between human beings uh, for not believing in in brahman there is no test this is not the only life we keep coming back over and over working our way uh, evolving working our way towards what you could call godhood or brahmanhood where you actually realize that you are no different while remaining in the body that you are no different from all the creation um, that you, that you that you physically see or feel uh, and this state in indic ideas is called moksha or becoming a jinna which is in the jain tradition uh, or nirvana buddha's nirvana there's no punishment from an outside force there's only a gathering and shedding of karma there is then therefore a very deep self responsibility of what am i going to do how am i going to behave uh, yeah and then there is the cycle of death and rebirth all of this leading towards mukti moksha nirvana or liberation there is a clear idea that the sense of separatedness from life is an illusion in indic philosophy is this this idea that is the wave uh, this analogy is the wave separate from the ocean uh this this often comes up and if you 
if you see it deeply for a short period the wave may have an ego if the wave were a living being it may say i have a body i have i exist for a certain time and i am separate from the ocean but then if somebody is watching and has a has an outside perspective to watching the wave uh you know a human being sees the wave rise and dissolve back into the ocean it may have existed within with an egocentricity for a certain period of time but then eventually it dissolved back and so human beings in the indic idea are part of this ocean part of this um, endless universe this consciousness so what do i want to conclude um, here clearly all religions are not the same please start learning and research on these divisive um, and even of course supremacist ideas in islamic and christian theology challenge your muslim and christian friends so per your allah i am a deplorable kafir worthy of being killed did gandhi go to heaven ask them engage them ask them is this not a disgraceful ideology to be believing in in this day and age what has happened has happened but do you continue to believe in this do ask them that and you see we it you know we when we we are taught to avoid talking about difficult topics but actually we should be taught about having such difficult conversations with politeness uh, with civility and so please learn to have this this affects us all it it affects us because uh the buddhist vietnamese buddhist uh, saint philosopher scholar uh, thiknathan says uh, until there is uh, peace between religions there will be no peace in the world these supremacist ideas and these fault lines between these two big world views is actually the reason of all the pain in the world all this hindu muslim muslim issues in the country every day that you that you see emanates because of these please start challenging please start talking to your christian and muslim friends um, about how how uh, you know would you live and respect people of a different religion it's 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 okay i mean they may say it oh we respect religions we respect you for your own religion me for mine but all this is a sham it's just superficial at the base of it there is these fundamental principles that i just spoke about please do learn a lot more and talk to your friends and if you're a muslim or a christian uh, listening to this presentation even though you you may not be the uh, you know the center of my of the purpose of this presentation but if you're listening to it and you found it interesting then i would encourage you to ask questions please inspect your religion you don't have to remain in a religion just because you were born in it choose your religions choose your spiritual ideas more actively than simply because of an accident of being born in them choose whether you are born in sin or whether you are born divine do you want to live by do's and don'ts and fear and god fearing ness or do you want to live with the self responsibility of karmic action do you want to believe or do you want to be a seeker a seeker of truth that's all really that i have for you thank you very much for listening and please do share your feedback in the comments in this uh, video below on youtube uh, that will help me prepare uh, presentations for the future ask me questions disagree with me i'll be very happy to uh, take those questions in the future presentations thank you very much and once again uh, my gratitude to sangam talks to let me present here thank you